Well, I can't talk individually about the work of my metal collages because anything I say about one particular collage applies to all the 36 inside the book. And the background is really my life and my life in the theatre, which I'm now in actually my 66 years, having done my first theatre production in 1950. And I have always intuitively and from instinct worked in an abstract way. So some 250 approximately production over 65 years have all been motivated by a sense of the moment in time, the generation, the life of that moment in time to appeal to have an understanding for the audience. So this exhibition of my sculpture work is just a, a move further from doing design for the theatre in abstract terms, but nonetheless naturally relating the space for the actors, the drama, the story, by which, whether it be Shakespeare or Bernard Shaw, Harold Pinter, whatever. Um, and my collage, metal collages, are just one step further from an abstract approach throughout in the theatre to a total um, abstraction in the case of my metal collages. And as I have said on many occasions talking to young people, giving lectures and so on, and generally as I'm doing to you now, um, it's I'm, the result of what I do in terms of the um, collages now is an accident and the talent that I have, that I appear to have, is to, is to recognize the accident when it happens. <laughs> and that is the accident that happened in the case of these collages, is that I bought a farm in France, and a disused old farm. And it hadn't been in use for decades since before the Second World War. And farmers, it was dead, it was being sold. And farmers never have the time or inclination to throw anything away. So what has been destroyed is, is equipment leaning up against the wall of the barn, for instance, and left there. And this particular accident that I am referring to was the accident of seeing rusty old metal leaning up. And it was that that gave me the idea of doing sculpture out of the metal. And most of it is just brown, rusty metal. But some of it um, has color. And I pointed out to you a short while ago um, two pictures in the book, Green Pasture 1 and Green Pasture 2. The reason I mention it specifically is I've been talking about rusty metal. Well, this is not quite rusty metal, or apparently not, because the two images are green. And the reason is 
that my neighbor farmer, who knew the sort of work I was doing, mentioned that dug down deep for the last X number of decades was something, a, 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 a kettle trough that might be of interest to me. So I said, indeed it might be. And he got his grab out and he lifted this kettle trough, which was indeed quite large in length. It was something like more than two meters in length. And he dug it, lifted it out of the ground where it had obviously been for decades. And those kettle troughs, when new, were originally green, right? You will also find in the book some that have a blue texture to it. And that is because the kettle troughs were originally blue. There is the red that you find, that is something else. The red that I've used here and there, I have painted, because kettle troughs were never red. And the circular ones are quite often related to the bends that you get around beer barrels. Well, of course, there were dozens of those hanging about from years past, rusty iron rings that were beer barrels. I use a lot of spheres. Now, the background to the spheres is rather different, and that is, I love spheres, and I have collected spheres of all materials, from marble to stone, uh, to plaster, to steel, the bull that were used for playing, um, hundreds of them in France, and ping pong balls, anything. I have collected out of a personal fascination for spheres. So, as you will see in the book, um, there are repetitions constantly of um, steel, rusty, spheres, rings, it's, it's a, and <coughs> what I make, the, the pieces of sculpture, all of my collages are fixed to a plywood wooden base, all of them, and then that's why you can hang them on the wall, display them on the wall, because I put aluminium channels on the back with a counter channel on the display panel and you hook them on, right? Yes. And I fix and I fix the metal um, to a smaller dimension size, something like half inch um, plywood panel. And I pay, usually paint, either don't paint it at all the back, or sometimes black. And, but the red stripe that I painted is paint on top, on the wood. And the, the metal is, is just half an inch or so in front of it. And the fixing of the metal overall piece to the timber is very simple. I drill a very small hole, or a series of very small holes in the metal, and I nail the metal through into the timber. But because of the nature of the material, you actually don't see the head of the nail, right? You don't see it. Well, there's all, there was an occasion when we drove along, along the countryside where we live in France, 
when Jane suddenly said, I've seen something in the ditch you might like. And indeed, we went back a few days later and there was a broken up oil drum lying in the ditch that had been dumped there. And I took it out and I thought, yes, it could be interesting, and put it in the back of the, of the estate car. <clears throat> and I had it sitting in my studio for some days until I suddenly thought, yes, if I do this, that, and the other, I could actually make something. And in fact, in the book are, in fact, two, two pieces of collage that were out of that crushed up oil drum and uh, that Jane driving along and see, saw in the ditch. There are actually two, two that I made out of it, yeah. That was also made out of the same piece. It's, I think it's called, uh, yes, out of the ditch too, yes. I think this probably started off with a band around the beer barrel and then, and then I found or made out of metal that I had, that had the right sort of feeling like with those openings. I mean, the black is the black is a wood, you see, behind. It's painted, right? And um, and that is one of those bulls the French use for playing bull, right? Yeah. I just assembled things as they appealed to my eye, right? And so obviously that circle wasn't originally a circle. I probably decided that it related to the ring underneath if I cut it in a circle out of whatever size the piece was, right? Yes. And gives me that position, black position for the ball there. I mean, I. It's, it's a matter of, then, of an aesthetic decision. Well, I'm an artist, and artists do what they intuitively feel they should do, and if I put that ball up there, it just simply wouldn't have been as interesting. <laughs> the fact that I'm doing it at all, it's just one move beyond doing abstract settings in the theater, which of course the abstraction in the theater has to be related to the subject of the play, the opera, the drama. It's not a history lesson, it's an appeal and a fascination for that moment in time, that audience of that moment in time. And my sculpture is simply, simply is the wrong word. My sculpture is a move beyond the need to, to present the play to make sense to the audience in visual terms, the background to the actors, to the singers, and to the dancers for that matter. But we're living at a, at a time of um, abstract sculptures like the work of so many people, like Anish Kapoor and Anthony Caro, etc. I did this production with David Pantney, which he commissioned me to do, of Simon Bocanegra. And I designed it as two panel, because I've talked to you for some time just now about abstraction. I designed it in terms of a conflict 
between two societies, the plebeian and the patriarchal societies, and I used two panels. One rusty panel that I cut with the acetylene torch, a groove into it, so that one understood, um, I'm talking about the model, I, un I understood, um, I realized that what I was making in the model um, was sort of like one foot tall by eight, nine inches wide, a piece of rusty metal. But by the time it's translated into a set on stage, it is six meters high by five and a half meters wide. Well, if you look at a piece of what is supposed to be rusty metal, six from the audience, six meters high by five point, by five and a half meters wide. It doesn't look like rusty metal because rusty metal doesn't come six meters high by five meters 50 wide. It will just look like a piece of scenery painted brown, right? That's why my piece of small, not much different to the size of your magazine there, I cut with a citalin torch, a groove to it, where the edges are silver, because rusty metal is steel or iron, right? And so essentially, when it's not rusty, it's silver, right? Yes. So the silver shows up um, um, on, the, on my piece of of rusty steel, and by the time it's translated to being the size it needed to be for the stage, um, it's still red as being metal, because one could understand it because of the cut. And then, it, the reason I did those two was the opposite one, the patriarchal society was a transparent plexiglass, rather elegant panel for the opposite half of those two societies, right? It's not actually the model. It's the pieces from the model, but it's not the model of Simon Bocanegra. The model of Simon Bocanegra was a much more three-dimensional structure, whereas what is in the exhibition is rather like a collage. But when I originally designed Simon Borkenegger, I hadn't yet started on my abstract sculptures. It is just that for some reason in my head, after it had been on display as a model at some point, I decided I quite liked it, but it takes up so much room, I'll make it, put it together into a sort of um, collage manner. And, and Pamela decided it should go as a sort of motivation um, into the exhibition. But actually, I hadn't started on thinking about my metal collages at the time when I did this conversion for Simon Bocanegra. And that is having mentioned the cutting of the Simon Bocanegra groove into the metal sheet coming silver. Of course I was aware that taking the rust surface off the sheet of metal, we get back to silver again. So I then got so fascinated with why don't I have some silver sculptures, right? But by grinding the rust of the piece of metal, and the one, the um, what I think is called the silver landscape, which is quite a big 
peace. Um, it's, an exa it's one example of one of my collages where I have actually taken to some extent or to a greater or lesser extent the rust off the surface of the metal so that it goes to silver. It was another silvery one. Um, and in the case of the silver, yeah, that one. Um, well, I took the rust off with, with the angle grinder rather Well, I'm doing it there. Yes. In fact, I think I'm actually working on that piece we were just looking at because I keep using the word accident because it is true. Um, before I bought the house in France, I lived 10 yards in Soho in London, 10 yards away from Oxford Street. But well, there wasn't any rusty metal lying around in Oxford Street. So, but had I not bought my place in France, another accident would have happened of another kind, right? Yes. That is actually a piece of wood, yes. which is a bit of a root of a tree. You see, again, I've done, I've used some wood, but again, I keep using the word accident, but it's relevant. I see a root of it. I did it with one rather large sculpture that I did. I could see a piece of an oak tree root half sticking out of the ground. And I was fascinated by the shape. It's not, it's, it's a piece of sculpture, but there was I've turned that, I'm not very fond of that, but I've turned it into a collage. It was actually started off as a set for um, the, Romans, the Romans in Britain, right? Um, and there was a reason that I won't go into now, but there was a reason why I found it relevant in an abstract form to the play, right? And, um, and this is not the time to go in, into details on television about it, um, or on film, but I suddenly realized that I could make an abstract content, content with that happened to be found piece of root. Um, by emphasize that it happened to be in scale to a model of 1 in 25 scale and, and, and I used it for the Romans in Britain set but not in that form just as I talked about a few minutes ago about turning the um, um, Romans in Britain into something you can put up on a wall. It, I was suddenly motivated to do something similar with the Romans in Britain and made that into a collage. Um, it, I just wanted to do it. It's not my favorite piece at all, um, but um, Pamela Howard chose it for the exhibition. So that's why it's gone in. Well, I talked to you about the ring, rings round um, uh, beer barrels. Well, there's an example, right? Well, you see, and these were obviously rings round other uh, containers. Um, and I just found them, had them, and then I was motivated to assemble it and the way it's there. What happened that I appeared from day one and I read a notice in 
and in the newspapers, the News Chronicle. You won't even have heard of the News Chronicle. It was a daily newspaper like the Daily Express and the Daily Mail some 60, 70 years ago. And they did a review of my work. And in it, I said exactly what I would say today. So it was something in my had that dictated to me to make this appeal to the audience of that moment in time in, in, in a somewhat abstracted presentation. And so the sculptures that we are making this program about and your interview is just a step beyond that. So it doesn't have to, to say anything other than what it says to my heart, my brain. And I look at the material and it gives me ideas. And quite often it does not give me ideas, but I think I'm going to get the idea. And I have it in my studio. In whatever form, and every day I pass it and I look at it, and one day it clicks, yes, I can do something with that. I can turn it into, yes, if I get my angle grinder out and I cut it through there and I cut it through the other way, yes, I could then assemble it in a way which makes it an interesting sculpture, an interesting collage. And that is, I suppose it's called talent. But I didn't know I had talent. I discovered that I must have had because I started that interview that I was referring to in the News Chronicle I couldn't believe what I said, because 60 years ago I said exactly the same things as now I'm saying to you today. Actually, it's an interesting moment right now that the first night of the Barber of Seville on Saturday was followed 12 hours later by the opening of the exhibition with you here at the college. So I had 12 hours between the curtain down at Welsh National Opera and the curtain so up, so to speak, for the reception here 12 hours later. Yeah. So that in itself is a sort of manifestation, right?